Hi there, and thank you for joining us for Unscripted. I'm Angela Kashuba, Dean of the UNC Eshelman School of Pharmacy. We have an amazing community here at the school, all working toward a shared goal of solving the world's most pressing healthcare challenges. And I'm excited for you to hear the unscripted stories of our faculty, staff, students, alumni, and partners. Today, I have invited Tajay Turner, a current PharmD student, to join me in my office for a conversation. Tajay, welcome. Thank you. It's so good to have you here today. So good to be here. So tell me, you had an early experience with our school through the LEAD program. Can you tell us about that experience? Yes. So I knew from an from about high school that I wanted to pursue pharmacy and I was looking through programs and UNC always came across my radar just because it was the number one school and had so many great opportunities. I had actually emailed um, someone who worked at UNC and was asking if there was any way for high schoolers to come and tour the school, any mm -hmm. opportunities for me to come learn about it. And I actually got an email back about the LEAD program. So I had applied and it was basically a two-month series leadership academy um, I'd completed around my junior year of high school mm -hmm. and it was so wonderful to come into Chapel Hill um, get to see the building um, we did a lot of CV and resume building just mm -hmm. to kind of prepare me for pharmacy school and also just getting to connect and meet with the students and I just slowly fell in love with the school and everything that it had to offer and the community and the students commitment to giving back so I have been in Eshelman a lot, I had a lot of exposure before coming to the school. So I've been very thankful for those opportunities. Oh, that's wonderful. So tell me what um, got you interested in pharmacy? Why the pharmacy profession? So I, my first dream was being a teacher. I always wanted to be a kindergarten teacher. And then as I grew through high school, I began taking marketing classes and some more upper level science classes. And I transitioned to have this passion for marketing, for science, and also helping others. And that's where I landed on pharmacy because pharmacy I always found was the perfect mix of science, but then also the industry side of pharmacy with all the opportunities there. And then also just that direct patient experience and being able to help right in my community, just as I've seen with like our local pharmacies. And then also the fluidity of the career itself. You can do a lot of things in pharmacy and you aren't locked into one specialty. You can always transition and grow your leadership skills, your pharmacy skills, and really bring them to different aspects of the field. So that is why I've always wanted to do pharmacy. That's terrific. Yeah, we have a handout where there's a hundred different careers Yay. you can do with a PharmD degree. And so it really is very flexible. But you understanding that very early on is unique. I think you yeah. really did your due diligence and did your homework. I love to do a little bit of everything and pharmacy is just that for me. Yeah. Well, let's talk about a little bit of everything because you are very busy here at the school. Since your first year, you have been a practice advancement intern in our practice advancement and clinical education division. So can you talk about um, your internship and what you do? Yes, so I've been so thankful for the opportunities at Eshelman. I don't think I ever would have thought that I would have been such a prominent student in a division starting my PY one year. And it all started because of my experiences with the Pharmacy Quality Alliance in undergrad. Okay. And so I was able to learn a lot about quality measurement development, value-based care, and meet a lot of wonderful people. And so my time at PQA allowed me to gain a lot of experience in practice advancement, okay. which prepared me for my internship um, with Professor John Easter and under Dr. Ferrari. And so specifically what I do in the division, I am on the payer engagement team for our community-based value-driven care initiative program. Okay. And we have initiated three um, evidence-based interventions in behavioral health, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease within pharmacies all across the country. And so my specific role is how do we make these interventions sustainable? Mm -hmm. How do we get them to last beyond the funding of the project? So I think that's great. Um, it, it's clear to me that brick and mortar community pharmacies are really health hubs. They're a place that are very accessible to the public. Um, they visit there all the time. And having pharmacists available to conduct clinical services like the ones that you mentioned are really important and help fill some healthcare gaps. So what do you see as um, 
challenges that we need to overcome or gaps that we might need to fill to make this a reality? So some of the bigger gaps I've seen is just ultimately with reimbursement is pharmacy provider status in our states to allow for pharmacists to allow to get the reimbursements they need for their services. Um, also working with physicians mm -hmm. and being able to show them the benefits of working with a pharmacist because I don't think all physicians know how essential a pharmacist mm -hmm. can be to these services. And then also educating patients on everything a pharmacist can do for them and not everything needs to go right to the physician. If you need a blood pressure check or you need your blood mm -hmm. sugar check, your pharmacist can help you do that and give you the skills that you need. If we can address those three gaps, we can really make community pharmacy what I like to call like a primary care hub. Yeah, right, that's terrific, okay. So something else that you're involved in is the Social Equity and Inclusion Committee yes. that we have here at the school. So talk about um, your desire to be part of that committee and some of the accomplishments that you've had since you've been part of it. So for me, um, as a student of color, diversity, equity, and inclusion has been something that is very important to me. Um, just in pursuing education, working as a recruitment ambassador, just representation matters so much. Okay. And so with the committee, um, I work specifically on our improving community culture at Eshelman. And so with that, um, we've been working to improve our triple CITR community culture and climate tool. And so with that, it's a reporting tool that students can use to engage if something has happened, if they're feeling ways that the community can be improved, and how mm -hmm. do we get students to embrace this tool as a way to improve our um, campus climate. If something happens in the classroom and students don't talk about it and mm -hmm. we don't bring it up to the um, leadership teams at the school, we're never gonna know how to change things. And I'm just so thankful to be at Eshelman where I'm able to sit down with deans and faculty and just be like, hey, we saw this and we really think this should be changed or we really mm -hmm. wanna improve this. And just being right. able to have such open conversations about improving our community mm -hmm. and improving like the culture of Eshelman, I've really enjoyed that. And then, as you said, I do like to do a little bit of it all. So we're actually working on increasing the equity and representation of our pharmacotherapy courses and our cases within those courses as well. So I've really enjoyed being able to look through the cases, trying to find metrics that we can improve on, mm -hmm. and just making sure that all of our cases are representative of everyone that a future pharmacist is going to encounter so that they are prepared mm -hmm. and ready to treat all people. Yeah, I love that. One of our goals as part of our strategic plan is to make sure that we are uh, developing um, cultural competence mm -hmm. in our professionals so that we can serve all North Carolinians and beyond. So being able to uh, have individuals who can look at our cases and make sure that we are representing diverse mm -hmm. North Carolinians yeah. um, is a really wonderful first step. So thank you for being part of that. No, of course, I love it. Right. It's really exciting work. Yeah, that's terrific. Um, you also are working on a research project um, through our pathway called Research and Scholarship in Pharmacy, mm -hmm. or RASPS. Can you talk about your research project a little bit? Yes. Yeah. So with it, I've always had the passion for business. I knew that marketing, understanding the industry, understanding different financial skills was going to be very important to my career. And so my RAS project actually looks into how pharmacy schools are incorporating business training into their curriculum. Okay. So what we are doing is we're going to be completing an environmental scan of the different curriculums for all the um, pharmacy schools in the country. Oh, wow. All 140 <laughs> all plus? All 140 plus. Wow. Okay. <laughs> we'll be going through and seeing what courses they offered. Are the courses offered yeah. as an elective or are they a required course? Do they have any special tracks that students can do? Mm -hmm. And then we also will be sending out a survey to those schools to kind of gauge how pharmacy schools are viewing adding business curriculum to their PharmD programs. And then the ultimate hope of our project is to encourage pharmacy schools and here at Eshelman to start adapting a business training track as part of the curriculum, as well as looking to see if there's any certificate programs, especially with the Center of the Business of Healthcare at Keenan right down the road, right. just trying to find ways to kind of merge those two curriculums for students who are interested mm -hmm. in pharmacy, but also have that interest in business. Right. And I think this research project is a great start for that. 
Yeah. One thing that I heard when I became dean mm -hmm. and was talking to our alums is that there was a gap in knowledge of our students around the business of healthcare. Mm -hmm. And since hearing that, we have added another course um, within our curriculum mm -hmm. that you just yes. recently <laughs> took. Um, we also added a seminar series around the business of healthcare. Mm -hmm. And we're thinking about certificate programs or pathways. And so if there are ways that pharmacy schools across the country can share um, mm -hmm. uh, that knowledge and share best practices. I think that just um, elevates the profession and helps everyone. Yeah. So oh, I'm excited to see Me the results too. of your project. <laughs> That's terrific. Yeah, I'm excited for it as well. So outside of, we haven't even talked about the million other things that you're involved in, um, but outside of all of those things that you're involved in um, within the pharmacy schools, we talk a lot um, with our students about well-being mm -hmm. and resilience. And that is also part of our strategic plan to make sure that um, our students, our faculty, our staff are well. So can you talk a little bit about well-being and how you manage to balance everything and then what you do yeah. for you? <laughs> I think the most important thing that I've had is such an amazing support system outside of pharmacy school. Okay. I'm so thankful for the support of my family and mm -hmm. friends outside of school. It's so nice to be able to have someone outside of these walls and being able to talk to them about a good test grade, a bad test mm -hmm. grade, being able to tell them the highs and the lows and everything and just allowing allowing you to vent and just kind yeah. of decompress after a day. Mm -hmm. And I think being able to have that person that you can go to and you can talk to has mm -hmm. really allowed me to kind of balance out a lot of my stress just because I'm not internalizing a lot of it. I'm able to get it out. And okay. with pharmacy school being so busy, uh, I never wanted my relationships outside of pharmacy school to suffer. So mm -hmm. I always make sure to prioritize calling my grandparents, calling my dad, my brother, um, and just making sure to keep those family relationships strong because that has really been my saving grace for pharmacy school. And then how I've managed it as a student, learning when to take breaks, mm -hmm. learning that you don't have to study to your max point. And you often learn things better when you take those breaks and you mm -hmm. really can just decompress for a second. And ironically, by taking those breaks, I've had to study less. And I always tell, um, whether it be my new peer mentees or the PY2s now, just if you're reaching that point, take a break, mm -hmm. take a breath, go outside on a walk. And I think that's really just been my well-being tip of pharmacy school because you know more than you think and having that confidence in yourself is really what takes you a long way here. Oh, those are really wise <laughs> words. Yeah, sometimes you get in your own head and you yeah. just think, oh, I need to work even harder. I need to do mm -hmm. even more, but sometimes less is more. And your best is always good enough. That's, yeah. that's what I've grown up on. Oh, I love that. Tajay, thanks for spending some time with me today. No, of course. Thank you so much for having me. This I really a, enjoyed it. It was a great conversation <laughs> and I learned a lot. <laughs> and I want to thank all of you as well for watching. We love sharing stories of those who make the UNC Eshelman School of Pharmacy excellent. We hope you'll join us for the next episode of Unscripted, conversations with people who are advancing medicine for life. See you next time.